luckily for me, I had a thirst for knowledge, and I actually read a book or two outside of school and learned some things on my own, but a lot of people don't have that drive or even, or even care to do that. do this teammates podcast here this is a unique podcast so i'm here with the the champ of osseo minnesota my buddy from high school caleb truex we're gonna mix some video in here and i figured i'd stop by the boxing gym right here in northeast and it's what is it a block from indeed yeah, brewing right company down the street, right down the street. indeed brewing company indeed, you're located. You're all you're right located. indeed brewing company is a new northeast brewing company we're gonna go have some beer are you drinking today i'm gonna have a couple man. you're gonna have my, a couple uh, it's my last uh, my last hurrah man i gotta i got to uh after new year's i gotta get on the straight and narrow so uh because then how many more. days is, there's what's it the 19 uh, 20, 19, 19. It's, it's three weeks from um three weeks from saturday so uh i got a, i got a few days to uh, enjoy some uh, adult beverages Okay, okay. Well, I know Caleb's one of my favorite beer-loving friends, and we're going to probably end up talking some boxing here, but I'm thinking that we might as well start off with the beer talk. Let's do it, man. And, uh, you know, I started, make, I started making my own beer this summer, and did you ever have one of those no, ales? No, man, you were supposed to give me one of something you drank it, man. That's something right. I think my team roommate age, drank the teammate's ale. ale, the last one. All right, but I thought it was like Fulton. It was really similar to Fulton, yeah. but what's your opinion of Fulton? You you don't think it's as good as like Surly, Furious? I don't um, want any more. I, at first, at first, I liked Fulton better than Surly, but uh, as I've been drinking more Furious, I, I think Surly uh, Furious has an edge on the IPA category. I'm not the biggest um, the biggest uh, blonde guy, so the the uh, the Fulton uh, Lonely Blonde is not my style, so I don't really have anything to say about that. But their their Libertine is good. I hear their uh, worthy adversary is good. I, uh, I haven't tried that as a stout, but uh, looking forward to it. Man. So, like in in the context of of beer fighting, all this shit, when you are drinking beer and okay, first of all, like how long are you training? Because that's what I'm trying to get at here. As um, far as like, how does beer interact with your training? I mean, it's at first when I first started uh, boxing. Actually, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't drink throughout the whole training camp, but uh, I, I've I've become uh, pretty. Uh, adept at managing my uh, my weight and stuff throughout the thing. I usually train for about six weeks, and uh, I'll stop drinking any beer for about the last three weeks. And it's it's good, man. It helps you relax after after a hard day of training. I usually train twice a day, so you know, an hour or so in the morning, and two two and a half hours in the afternoon. It's it's nice to relax and have a nice brew uh, with with dinner or whatever, and just uh, wind down for the night. You know, when I was in college and we started to try to get big some of my me head buddies out there the brandon strax of the world the burt bandy aka memoir set of the world they would they would like be so anti-drinking so they would just binge drink on the weekends <laughs> until they would like get sick yeah, but yeah. then during the week we'd be lifting and they wouldn't even have one beer because they were afraid yeah. that it would ruin their fitness and all that stuff so what that's, you think that's uh, kind of that's, a myth that's ass backwards man it's, yeah that's uh, what i would because i'm more if, like if you it's in moderation it's perfectly fine man. Yep. like i'll have i'm never i'm never getting wasted or anything like that i'll have two two beers or whatever uh, when I eat dinner, when I go with my boys and, and just chill, man, just hang out, lay, or you know, just uh, conversate, whatever, and uh, just keep it to a minimum, you know, keep it uh, in moderation. You go out and get wasted on the weekend, you're just gonna have to recover for a day or two, and that ruins a day uh, of uh, of lifting, you know. So. Uh, so like, how many cigarettes do you smoke a day when you train? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've had one cigarette in my life, man. I, I'm not a smoker. Man. <laughs> I'm not a smoker at all. Man. So like, all right, are you how up to date are you on these breweries? Cause like, indeed, is the newest one that I know of. And but I heard there's another, there's the Excelsior one. Have you been to that one? Um, I know there's there's one called uh, Lucid over in Minnetonk or something like that. I, I, that, uh, might, that might be the one I'm. I think there's another of. one. I think there's another one in Excelsior. There's one in uh, St. Louis Park called Steel Toe. Um, oh, and I had uh, I had uh, one of their beers called Dark Descent. It's like a porter style. That was that was delicious, man. I had one of those. But I'm I'm loving indeed, man. That midnight uh, midnight stalker and their their uh, their holiday seasonal was great too, man. I'm about to. Uh, the thing with Indeed too is you have the option to nitrogenate your beer, right? Yeah. Every single beer they they nitrogenate it. So. so like if you like Guinness and stuff like that. You can get any beer that you want, basically yeah. nitrogenated there. I haven't. I actually haven't tried any like that. I know. Uh, really? I think Grant tried one like that, and he liked it. But uh, no, I haven't. I haven't tried any with the nitrogen yet. I, I just like my regular uh, hoppy midnight stalker, man. I'll tell you what, man. This summer, you have to assist me, and we'll come up with a recipe for like. What would your favorite? Do you have a favorite beer? Um, I like black IPA. I like. Uh, I like double Bach, man. Those are my two, probably my two favorite uh, styles of beer. So the, definitely the the. 
where they caramelize and they roast absolutely. the stuff for absolutely. the most part. Yeah, 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 okay, so more than IPAs, you prefer something that's been roasted a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like a, a, a Bach. It's got a little sweetness to it. I like that too. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm impressed, dude, that we're, we're talking to Caleb Truex, and he drinks for, like, two-thirds of his training schedule for the... <laughs> That's what I do. In, moder in moderation. I, in total uh, moderation. I usually, uh, usually wake up in the morning and uh, drink a few beers for my road work, and then, uh, then get to the gym and have a couple afterwards. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you a wine guy? Yeah, I like wine, too. I like red, wine too. red and white? Red and white, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not, not the biggest wine guy. I like it with meals once in a while, but uh, I don't really, I don't usually buy a bottle or anything like that. I'll, uh, I'll just uh, have a glass with it. Sure. Know, I, know, I know what compliments what and, uh, and, and so on. So, so for, because I was just thinking wine, food, food, wine, when you're, when you're in training, do you have, because, okay, the last couple weeks, pretty much no alcohol at all yeah, yeah. what about food is food consistent through your whole training schedule or is it something where at the beginning you can kind of just forget about it and then at the end or, or vice versa how does food work uh it's it's pretty strict uh right now i'm about three weeks out and my weight's pretty uh pretty close i don't have to lose too much weight so how I'll, much more I'll, uh maybe 15 pounds which is not a lot <laughs> which is not a lot <laughs> A lot of girls yeah. that see this are just gonna be like, "Oh, yeah, damn, yeah, you, Caleb, yeah. man!" It's, 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 it's oh, just water weight, ladies. It's just water weight. It's not. It's not actual weight. I'll put it right back on. But uh, <laughs> no, I I, um, I usually I eat healthy all the time for the most part. I uh, obviously I'll go on the weekend or when I'm you know I'm watching a football game. I'll have some wings or whatever. But uh, um, usually the last three weeks, the same time I'll uh, I'll quit out my drinking is when I really stricten uh, my diet up. I'll, I'll eat just mostly. Um, you know, like uh, like an omelet for breakfast or okay. uh, or oatmeal for breakfast every other day. Usually, I switch it up. Um, I'll eat uh, some kind of pasta or rice or a whole wheat pasta. Brown so you rice. definitely like to get your carbs in too, because yeah, you, you need to. kind of the balance to. of the fast burning yeah. energy, the slow, right? You I have mean, to. And, and a lot of people cut, cut the carbs out, and I'm yeah, like, man, you should. Because then, in my opinion, this is my uneducated opinion, like when you start cutting out a certain, so you got sugars like simple carbs, super yeah. fast burning energy, yeah. and you got beans and the other proteins and they're slow burning energy, cottage cheese, really slow burning. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people cut out the, like, the mid-range carbs and then it's like, yeah. then you're either going to be full yeah, or you're exactly. going to be super hungry, yeah. I don't know. Those type of like crash diets like that, are, are they don't work, man. Especially for someone like me who ex expends so much energy in a day, like I work out you know three hours a day basically. and. And I brown, you know how many calories I burn, but uh, it's yeah. a lot. And uh, yeah, you you have to have carbs in order to fuel your your workouts and just fuel your day. You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. That's I'm looking around here and just like the amount of energy ex being expended at one place yeah. at one time it makes Lifetime Fitness yeah, look like a, does, like a theme man. park, it man. Does, man. It does. I should start sure. coming to these boxes. You should see our gym. Yeah. This is more of a this is more of a, uh, a a gym like I was saying for people that are just taking classes, like at yep. my gym. It's pretty much strictly boxers, and it's. Well, it's uh, what's your name of your gym then? ACR Boxing. Where's that at? Uh, in Coon Rapids. And so, what? What did you work out here just because you knew we were linking up later? No, or? because uh, sometimes I come down here to do some sparring. There's some guys that work out here on the regular, uh, and I come down here to spar. Sometimes I kind of my gym and spar, but for the most part, I come down here. So you kind of just show up here, show them how it's done, and then go back and to your home base. Beat them up and leave. Man. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I do it, man. So, it's so, all right, all right. On the on the boxing note here, you know you fought. How many amateur fights did you fight? Uh, about thirty five. So, okay. So I can't and and what course of time was that? Uh, about three years. Okay. And then when you first start, I mean, what was your record at the end of that? I think I was like twenty, like twenty eight and, and eight or twenty eight and five. Or so something like of that. the of the people that beat you as an amateur, did you ever fight them and beat them as a pro? Phil Williams, man. Your boy oh, Phil, Phil the Drill. Drill. Yeah, 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 I like yeah, yeah. If Phil the yeah. Drill watches this. I like you, but I was. <laughs> this is one of your fans. Yeah, man, I, I like Phil the Drill. <laughs> Not as much as this dude, because like when that was the only time I think I uh, I cheered against Phil the Drill was when, <laughs> when you were doing that. Yeah, I got but a then couple, uh, I got a couple of fans that are like. But he that. beat you as an amateur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right when I first started. Yeah. How did he beat you? Uh, just decision. Yeah. Okay. Actually, at, at, in this ring right here, man. In this ring, he beat me uh, in this gym, man. So those amateur fights, do a lot of people come to them or? 100, 200 people. Maybe. Wow! This, that was for like the city tournament, so it was okay. uh, uh, a pretty big, uh, big, pretty big tournament. So there's sure. quite a few people here. Sure. Okay. And then uh, besides uh, Jermaine uh, or Taylor, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Besides Taylor, like, who would you say your toughest opponent was 
Um, that you I ever think, fought? Is that I think it was asked that before? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it was uh, Kerry Hope, uh, the guy that I fought from Wales. I fought him at the. Oh yeah. The, um, I fought him at Casino, the Casino. Uh, uh, no, Grand Casino was it? No, it was at uh, Armory, the St. Paul Armory. Oh yeah, but yeah. That yeah. guy, that guy was. He wasn't like the, the most skillful. He wasn't like the, the. He couldn't hit the hardest. Sure, he didn't have very much power, but he was in such good shape. He was. He was I remember like him in my face the whole damn time, man. How long died. did that one go? That was ten rounds. That was my first ten round fight, man. It had me just. Well, that was your first ten rounds. And what fight number was that? In I think my 13th fight. Okay. 13th or 14th fight. And right now you're, how many, what's your record right now? 20 wins, one loss, 20. one draw. 20, one, one. Okay. Yeah, man, that Taylor fight though, we watched, we watched that and like, I can't remember, they asked you, you know, if you were happy or not. I mean, what, what were you, what was your opinion after uh, losing that um, fight? I mean, I know you, you have to have some yeah. happiness, but maybe only that was just like a bittersweet, you know? I was, or, I was disappointed and, and, it, and it was, it was bittersweet, you know, like I, at the same time, um, it's I should say it, it, it's it's great to be in that spot like fighting against a world champion. It's great to knock him now, but that's I didn't I didn't go there just to knock him now. You know I went there to win. So yeah, yeah. It, it, I took a lot away from it. Um, confidence, uh, knowing that I can uh, fight with the best fighters in the world. He's, he's a former world champion, so yeah, uh, I, I learned a lot. Knock down fight. the former world yeah, champion and, and, uh, and still pissed at yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, uh, I took a lot away from it. I, I, I gained a lot of confidence. It made me a better fighter, but at the same time, it's a loss on my record. It's a blemish that I didn't want. And That's I, and I, true, It's a man. blemish that I shouldn't have had. If I would have fought my best fight, I would have beat him. If, if I fight him again, I'm going to knock his ass out. So did you, in in hindsight about that fight, okay, if you would have fought your best fight, you would have you would have beat him or whatever. I mean, so like when you're nitpicking yourself now from the past, what are you saying, you know, if it was your best fight and playing, it wasn't your best fight, you know? Um, what are you what are you saying, I guess? what What's different in your mind or what you could have done? Or uh, My coach over there, uh, right there, Tom Hall, said me and him just, uh, we just uh, work on things in the gym that, that he sees in the fight, uh, the things that I should have did differently. And, and so basically we'll, we'll take that film of that fight and just, nitpick it and and you know i should have this there this is what happens when this is what you should do when this uh situations uh comes about and and you just got to get better from it man you just have to adjust and uh and uh learn from your mistakes and just get better well if it's not too much of a secret what was a mistake or two that you've tried to correct since uh, then the main thing was being more aggressive and throwing throwing more punches is, is uh is what cost me the fight basically i i just wasn't busy enough i didn't throw enough punches i I should have attacked more. I kind of laid back and let him dictate the pace where I should have been the one doing that. Um, and uh, that's one thing I've worked on real hard the last since April, whatever the fight was. It was uh, April 20th. So yeah, okay. I've, I've worked on it since April, and I think I've I've seen an improvement in my game as far as that goes. So. Well, I'm excited, I'm excited for this to, next to fight. Bus band up. And, I'm excited uh, for this next fight. Okay, so a little bit about me and just my little bit of knowledge of Matt Vanda. Back in the day. In my dad's basement in his old shitty TV, they would be showing on like local access TV fights, yeah. and I don't know if it was like uh, Mystic Lake or something, but we watched him, and there was he was fighting a guy who looked t twice his size, yeah, yeah, and he yeah. hit this dude's head so many times, and my dad was <laughs> down there watching, and we had no idea who Matt Vanda was. I don't know how long ago it was, yeah. but it seems like a, literally a decade ago. It could have. He's it been could've. fighting for a long time. He's okay. been fighting for I think probably. 13, 14 years, so okay. he's been around for a long time. And he hit this dude so many times that everyone at, in the household, at the fight on the TV, like everyone thought this dude was going down, but yeah. he was so big. Yeah. And then Vanda, of course, takes so many to the jaw, yeah, and he, yeah. he didn't get phased either for he's how... Tough, man. And I mean, he, he's tough, and he can't punch very hard, so it's, it, really? it's a recipe for a long fight. He can't fight. punch very hard? No, absolutely not. Okay, so he tricked... I thought he could punch hard, but maybe it's just because he... It might look like it on yeah, TV, but he doesn't no? have very much pop. No. Do you get, like, Mythbusters out here with their yeah, measuring yeah. machine yeah. or something? And we, we take him down to uh, take him down to Cowboy Jack and, <laughs> and have him punch, the, uh, have him punch the, the, the bag. Yo, we were down there. It was me, Thad. It was like Chris and Chandler Olsen, and we were doing that, yeah. and they have it so close to the wall. I know. You punch it freaking Or that wall, was at Poor House, yeah. I think, or something. But yeah, I, I punched it, and I followed through because I suck at yeah. punching, obviously. Hit the wall, dude. And I was like, you guys should move that machine a little far, <laughs> farther back. So, uh... Are those, hold on, are those things any accurate? Or, I don't know. I have no know? idea, man. Did no you idea. ever do those? Yeah, I've done them before. Did I, I you did, always I, win, I, I hope? Against, I did it against some dude that was about six foot four and about 250 pounds at, at uh, Cowboy Jacks downtown, and, and I just stood in one spot and hit it, and I got like 970, <laughs> and he ran from halfway across the bar and like, jumped at it, and he, got, he beat me by like five points. Oh, he did? And, yeah, I'm like, oh, come okay. on, man. You, you got you to gotta stand still. You ain't going to hit nobody with a punch like that. <laughs> well, we had goofy-ass Chris Olsen. He was trying to do karate kicks <laughs> and stuff on that thing. Yeah. So... 
but we'll get we'll, we'll get back into Vanda, I think, a little bit here. But I was just curious, since I was joking about Chris Olsen because he's a goofy dude, uh, what do you think about MMA as far as, uh, uh, first of all, the public opinion? You know, we were, my roommate and I last night we were just BSing about MMA, and he thought it was on its way out. And I said, I think it's, it's making more money than it ever has. But boxing seems, is boxing coming back boxing, too? Boxing is making a, making a little resurgence. I mean, it's never, like a lot of people say boxing was dead. It was never dead, man. It was, it was on a yeah, low. They say was, that a lot. It was on a low, uh, it was on a low um, point, I guess. But that's the United States. Boxing is a worldwide thing. Man. Yeah. Boxing, they sell out soccer stadiums in Europe and, and other places and uh, all over the world with boxing. But uh, it's been on national TV the last two weekends. So that's a good thing, you know, getting it back on uh, free television. That's a good thing. So What's it take to get on TV. I mean, it's, the biggest thing, obviously, he fought Jermaine Taylor, yeah, yeah. and so he he's it's, obviously the biggest draw. Yeah, yeah. So besides the fact that uh, you got to have a guy who at one time was a huge draw, and then it'll elevate your game. I mean, what what else is there? I mean, is it basically you got to just keep winning in Minnesota yeah, and hope someone gives you another shot? Absolutely. On a, yeah. I, I think after this fight, if I if everything goes as planned, this fight, I'll have another shot uh, at a big nice. fight on TV. Um, I've, I've been offered some some fights since uh, my Jermaine Taylor uh, fight that would have been like one on ESPN, one on Showtime. They were they just weren't the right fight at the right time. They offered them on like short notice, and and uh, the money wasn't right on, on a couple of them. So you just gotta just pick your pick and choose your shots uh, when you step up and take a big fight, and uh, you just gotta have a promoter that's uh, that has enough pull to to get you in those spots, you know, to, to get on TV and and to okay. get in the right fight where you're gonna win and and hopefully get back on TV after. Big time, like the top of the top of the world boxers, they make more money than the MMA guys. Oh, not even close. Not, not even close, man. <laughs> so yes. Yeah. Yeah. Way, that's what, way, that's way, what I way, way more. Those guys. That's one thing about MMA is because they have a Dana, union or something, Dana White, don't they? No, 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 no. There's no union, but Dana White has that thing like lockdown. Like lockdown, man. He. Uh, what like, about Pride in Japan? No, nah, they don't make nothing either, man. Uh, it, it's it's a lot of money compared to to what a normal person would make. Like let's say, for instance, John Jones makes. John Jones was like the, the best guy in UFC this last year, and he made like a million dollars. Uh, what? Fighting, and he made a lot of money off of endorsements. He made they, the they best were, dude, and he made a million. dollars. He made like a million or two million dollars, and Floyd Mayweather made eight, what eighty five million dollars last year, and he's the best guy in boxing. And, and that was just on boxing, or is that promote? Uh, that's other? just Floyd Mayweather made zero dollars on advertisements and, and endorsements. He made eighty five million dollars for two fights, and the highest paid uh, athlete in the world. And and uh, I mean, there's there's. There's dozens of boxers that made more than the most uh, uh, UFC yeah. fighter. Why is that? It has to it's, do with the business model, doesn't it's, it? It's it's business, man. That like they, the boxing pay per view does more. The TV networks pay more for it because, like I said, it's it's covered all over the world. Uh, it's a it's an old sport, like old money, you know. Like it's it, there's a difference between something that's an upstart and something that's been established since Jack Johnson in the 1890 or whatever. Yeah, it's, right. it's a lot of a lot of people watching boxing, man. That's a good point. That's yeah. a very good point. So, like, okay, you sparred with Vanda before. Yeah. When, when was the first time you ever got to, like, work out or spar with Vanda? Uh, probably about three years ago. Three years ago, yeah. His, his, my man, my, my manager is his, was his coach for uh, for about a year and a half, two years, something like that. So he worked, we worked his at name? the same gym. Ron Like, my manager. Okay. Uh, and he, and uh, so, yeah, we sparred together all the time, man. Back, okay. A few years back. Does he ever get the best of you? No, absolutely Never? Not. I used to kick shit out, man. He, uh... He, he he was always tough. I never really hurt him, but I just outboxed him. And okay. and back then, that was what three years ago. I'm I'm much much better than I was now. And he, if anything, he's probably worse than he was back well, how, then. Well, how old is he? Do you know? He's 34. Yeah. 34. He's, so what are you? 28. 29. 29. 29 now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So he's. I mean, say he. Say he loses you, but then he beats a bunch of dudes, right? He start, he keeps boxing. What do you see for a guy that's had his career? How much longer does a guy like that usually fight for? Uh, he actually said this is going to be his last fight. Uh, do, oh. I, do I believe that? Probably not. But oh, really? Uh, Has he said uh, it before? Do you think? No, I don't think so. I okay. think this is the first time he's ever said this is it. You know, but uh, um, him, he's kind of at the end of his road. He's he's had like he's had his money. He's made his money. He's traveled around the world. You know, he's he's traveled yeah. to Canada, Mexico, fought in New York, Las Vegas, everywhere. Um, but uh, I think it's it's just uh, his career's uh, winding down. You know and, what his uh, record is? Yeah, he's 44 and 14. Okay. And, uh, uh, I think he's probably lost uh, probably 12 out of his last 20 fights, so he's, he's de below so, 500. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's on the downside. Okay. Knockouts or no? No, he's only been knocked out twice, I believe. So. Okay. So what makes a dude like that have the, what is it, just the 
you know, the toughest jaw? You know, what it, what makes it do nothing? Um, I mean, just, it just, just is what just, it is? You or? just have it, man. You just have it, and uh, and you can be real relaxed. Uh, that's one thing. If people get hyped up and, and, uh, and get kind of wigging themselves out, sometimes they'll take a punch that they don't see, where he's real relaxed, and he can usually see the punches coming. Really? He's kind of like the jiu-jitsu dudes yeah, exactly, that exactly. they can almost look like they're not even trying because yeah, exactly. they know exactly how to try yeah. and then just relax. Makes it look easy. Like, and defending, like his, he's pretty good defense. He keeps his gloves up, and, and uh, it's just hard to hit him. You know, That's why I'm going to hit him in the body, and he's soft in the body. So, uh, now, you you predicted like an eighth-round knockout or something, body knockout yeah, or something? Yeah, won't go past eight. Won't go past eight. You heard it, it here. Does, won't go be, past it does, eight I'll be rounds. upset. Okay. No, there was one time, and it was, I think it was when you fought at Hinkley the first time as a pro, which was, was it maybe your third, fourth, fifth fight or something, where you predicted like yeah, a second round second body effort. knockout or yeah. something, and you just walked out on the second round and just hit the dude. And I was standing like four feet yeah. from her, and I had never heard a sound in my entire life, like your glove hitting his side. And the, it looked like you like punched into a clay figure. Like he went like this, dude, and crumbled down. And the whole place went nuts because I think Phil Drill was at that fight too. I mean, yeah, yeah, fighting before you, something, yeah. but it was just funny because you predicted that. I mean, you, you know, you like baby that man, fight. Like yeah, Ali. that was my last fight. I did my last fight like that too, fourth round. That was honestly one of the craziest things I've ever seen, dude. That was almost as crazy as that dude who got knocked out, the world's fastest knockout. And I, <laughs> I saw Drill. that he came out. Yeah, when Phil Drill knocked him out, and the dude came out at first in underwear and like slipper or. Uh, what did he have? He had like Sacconi shoes on or something. I don't know, and they made him, they were ready to fight. And then the rest were like, wait a second, you don't even have boxing <laughs> shoes on. So then he goes and puts his boxing shoes on. He's still got his like Superman underwear looking yeah, deal. He runs across the entire thing at Phil the Drill. And Phil the Drill like leans backward, just swipes him. <laughs> Crack the knockout. Was, him go look that up. World's fastest knockout. Yeah. Phil the Drill. Versus Brandon Burke, I think. Brandon Burke. Where's was he from? Like Iowa or Illinois? Uh, I don't know. Oh, who cares, man? Well, wow, you're, like, you're like the baseball card guy. You know all the stats and shit, you know? I don't know. That's pretty rad. No, I heard rumors about you that after, I know you talk about punching more after this last, you know, after your loss or whatever, but uh, I heard rumors that your whole style's been, uh, been you're testing your style. You're yeah, testing man. the limits of, because, hold on real quick, because here, Caleb Truax and I played high school football together on a really really good team just kidding we weren't that good he was super good i was real good at bringing him water but he was like a tweak man caleb he's always been chill nice dude but like on the field you he would just snap when he would like get ready to tackle somebody he would just get all jacked up before the game and he would just make tackles like nobody's business then he started boxing and i heard correct me if i'm wrong that that was kind of one of the first techniques is they taught you how to be a counter puncher and yeah, to use your energy kinda, more was, wisely and, and it was, it was kind of just my my style man I, they didn't really teach me to just, oh, okay. it just uh it was just my style and my coach cultivated it and, and that's what i do I'm, that's what i'm good at but now i just need to pick up my my aggressiveness and and, and start punching more you know so is that pretty much the gist of of what's uh what's new about you in the yeah, ring yeah, just, uh, just more aggressive more fire? uh true acts 2.0 well really. how do you how do you harness being more aggressive at the same because i think of you like or fuck i think of like me if i didn't know what i was doing but then i started to like be good at counter punching or something and then they're like all right you need to punch more I, what do you do besides just emotionally dig deep yeah. you know i mean is there is there a new skill set on the attack no, that you don't have or? i mean it's, it's not the skill set it's just a it's a change in attitude you know I, okay. I and and what what brought that about is what made me see that i need to do that in order to win was that fight where i lost you know i I, uh, I was going about my counting punching ways and, and uh, I was winning fights and then I lost because I didn't punch enough. So I kind of uh, you know flipped the switch in there and then I got to get my ass in gear and throw more punches, man, to beat these guys on the next level. One thing that I noticed about whether it's UFC, boxing or anything, they do like the media hype, not like this podcasty style, but they're always like, get both of the guys to say that they're gonna win. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, why wasn't there like a really good guy? And they interviewed him, and he's like, yo, I'll probably win. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah I'll pr statistically, I probably win. In my brain, my heart, yeah. I think I'm gonna win. But no, it's like, yeah. yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock this guy out. And then, because yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. something with you and Vanda when you said the eighth round, and then he's like, oh, Caleb's gonna get it, or Truex is going down. Yeah. So does, come on, does there, there gotta be some like PR person being like, oh, are you? You gotta say this. Yeah, I'm, you're not gonna go out there and say you're gonna. You're what gonna do they? Lose, do yeah, they yeah. like tell yeah, you what to just, say every pride, fight? Man. You gotta nah, say yeah, every fight. You gotta say it's just, like. It's I'm just gonna pride. Be... It's just pride, man. You don't want. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to uh, go out there and say, oh yeah, training camp's been okay. It's not been. It's not been. I'm in. Well, I'm true. in kind of good shape, true. right? I'm not in that great of shape, but. <laughs> right, because I think of a scenario where it's like, all right, you got a guy who's totally the underdog, 
and he doesn't want to be cocky, but he wants to win. So in his heart, he's like, all right, I think I can beat this guy. I know I can beat him, but statistically, you know, I might not. Like, just to be a realist, yeah. you know, like if you're playing yeah. the Lakers and you're the Timberwolves or something, yeah. and you're like, and they interview the whole Timberwolves, and Kevin Love's like, yo, we are going to win ah, every yeah. time. And then you lose. But in, in, in other sports like that, you know, you you have to play a team. In boxing, you shouldn't take the fight if you don't think you'll win. You know what I mean? That's, so that's a different angle on that. But that's true. If I, if, I, if I don't think I can win, I'm not going to fight because I'm not going to be fully engaged in the training and, and fully confident that I can do it. So I'm not going to do it, you know. If you're not if you're not 100% confident you can win and 100% into it, you shouldn't be in the fight in the first place. <laughs> when, when you finished that, it reminded me of Three Ninjas. Hey, we man. told him, he's like, don't fight unless you know you can win. Rocky loves That's why I've never man. fought. <laughs> <laughs> like, ever. So let's, what do you, like, Let's on... wrap this up, man. I gotta take a shower, dude. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. Uh, what do you What do you uh, eat on the fight day? Um, I, I usually, I try, I used to pick out, man, and, like, eat too much and get fucking full and, and uh, like, bogged down. But now I kind of uh, tone back, and I eat pretty much the same thing I would... I would eat on a on a normal day of training. I eat maybe a little bit more pasta or carbs. Okay. But I'll drink a ton and ton of water, like coconut water, Powerade, just stuff to hydrate you to make sure you're uh, going to be feeling uh, in top shape. For how the much fight. How much time between the last thing you eat and then the time you actually fight? I mean, I, I usually eat my meal at about five, and I and I go to the stadium or whatever, uh, wherever I'm fighting, and then I'll just bring like shit to snack on. Like I always eat my 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 only. Um, uh, what's it called? What's that? What's that called when you uh? Pref what? what? No, like you you have a ritual. What's a what's? Oh, like uh. What's that word, man? Like superstition. Yeah, my only, my only superstition is I always eat two packages of oatmeal, like dry oatmeal, like what? cinnamon brown sugar. How do you eat that? Just shake it up and eat it and mix it out with some Powerade, man. That's so it's like an oatmeal pill. It's like a, it's like like a, it's like, it's it a power power food. Like I'll power try food. that now. Hey, man, you'll probably be jumping out the wall. All right, <laughs> man. Well, we'll We'll wrap this up, man. Thanks for taking the time. You know, we're, we're gonna go yeah, drink some beers. I think we're late too. I felt my phone. I felt my phone vibrate and stuff, but we'll uh, we'll follow up, we'll check them out after the fight, and uh, yeah, I'll throw some beats on this bitch. <laughs> See how it goes. <laughs>